they established the ghetto. But by that time, there were 800 people left. That was it, mostly women. And we lived there for about a year. Yeah. Also meager, meager um, rations. But we had a garden. I worked part-time part in the garden. We, you know, a friend of mine who lives here in Brooklyn now, her mother ran the garden, and we supplemented our food because we grew carrots and potatoes and all kinds of different things. And I worked in this factory where they chopped wood. But I worked, you see, first I chopped. I even chopped my finger off almost once. Later on, I loaded boxcars, unloaded and loaded, with big planks of wood, you know, which longshoremen would be doing today. And that was, that year was pretty peaceful because they didn't take anybody out of the ghetto. 43. 43, from 42 to 43, till, till Yom Kippur 43. Yom Kippur 43. And we had um, a, um, a commandant there. He was pretty decent, you what know. What was his name? I think it was Krishna or Krishna. Somebody met him after the war, but he, he didn't kill anybody. Uh, he had, uh, at one time, his wife and children visited him, and his children played with the Jewish children. Everybody thought, oh my God, look at this nice German. He lets his children play with the Jewish children, you know. This is the way it was. And then Yom Kippur, 1942, 1943, they sent us to Riga. One minute. Describe the ghetto for me visually. Where was it in, in the town of Riga? It was uh, Gartenstrasse. I lived in Zifson's house. In fact, I met Mr. Zifson not too long ago, who lived in the United States. I said, I must owe you rent. And. Uh, my, I had a few friends. We lived seven people in one room, and uh, there were six six room apartments. So all these people shared one kitchen and one bath.